Hey everyone, how's it going today? Well, today we're gonna talk about a subject I've been wanting to do for a while, but I was kind of waiting to get more numbers for you. So this subject today is how I increased or doubled my revenue in one year's time. But before we get to the numbers, I want to kind of give you some background on me and how I got started in the business, how it progressed from there. Was it big, was it small? How long have I been in business? All that. So I got in business in my early 20s, back when uh, there was no cell phones, no Google, no Facebook, paper marketing, good old fashioned door-to-door -door advertising. So that's when I got into business and I started my business in window washing. So I started a window washing business and then shortly after that, about six months to a year after that, I had a buddy of mine that got hired with a carpet cleaning company. So he called me up and he said, hey, do you want to learn how to do carpet cleaning? They're hiring right now and I can get you in. So I said, well, why not? I was already doing the window washing. It was an easy add-on. I could just add in the carpet and go from there. So I went ahead and applied, got, got hired and started cleaning carpet. And it was uh, portable carpet cleaners. Um, this was a uh, bait and switch operation. I didn't know what bait and switch was back then. I was early 20s. What did I know? Not a whole lot. So I started with this company and we were happy to make, you know, maybe a hundred bucks a day. And you were like, oh, I made my money a hundred bucks a day. Uh, but then they were charging you to use their portable machines. You had to buy their chemicals. They were charging, they put out ads for, I remember the cheapest one was 10.99 a room. Back then I'd do 10.99 a room and you could call and somebody would say, okay, that's a three room minimum. So. 30 bucks was the job and you were expected to sell it. You had to sell extra treatment, sell the deep scrub, all that, we know all that about that now. But back then, I didn't know any better. So I went ahead and tried to sell and it was just a struggle. Obviously, you're making 30 to $50 per job and then you get a cut of that. So sometimes you get a $100 job, it's, oh man, I'm getting 30% of that, so I made 30 bucks on that $100 job and that gets old really quick. We all know how quickly that gets old. You're making a hundred bucks and you're just lugging a portable around and it's hot and you're sweating and you're just struggling. So after about a year there, I said, okay, that's enough, enough of the bait and switch, enough of that. And I went out on my own, not knowing at all how to run a business. Yeah, I was doing window washing, but it wasn't really a, a business at that point. So I incorporated the carpet cleaning into my window washing business and I ran them in tandem or as add-ons. So after I got all that equipment in the first portable that I needed to get started and went out on my own, shortly after that I realized, okay, I could probably make more money doing the carpets than doing the window washing. I kind of um, ended the window washing and just went full time into the carpet cleaning industry. So. Um, at that point, I had all the equipment I needed, portable, a 175 scrubber, and some, you know, some chemicals. That was it, and back to my pickup truck. So I was cooking with fire uh, back then. So after starting that business and just moving with carpet cleaning and doing uh, just uh, flyer advertising and really kind of just building my client list as a lowball carpet cleaner, because that's all I knew was, oh, I, kill it. I need to you know, charge practically nothing to get a lot of work, right? So that's what I did. I charged at a low price and I tried to get as much work as I could. So you're cleaning nasty apartments and, and what we know now is, you know, if you're a low ball cleaner, if you're charging low prices, you're going to get a lot of low quality work. So a lot of low hanging fruit and you're just grabbing it because you've got to pay the bills. Of course, I was lean back then, so I didn't have a lot of bills. I wasn't married, didn't have any kids, so I could afford to live on very little and put a little back into the business each month and trying to to build it bigger and bigger and bigger and doing more different ads but i was struggling and struggling and struggling still to try to grow and we all have this struggle when we get in the business how do i find more clients i ended up buying a marketing program this was uh prana marketing if you know joe polish i brought his bought his system and implemented some of that right away um, one of those things was to raise my prices and immediately overnight, I'm scared to do it, but I end up doing it anyway. And I talk about this on some other videos, but um, I raised my price. I started changing the way I did things and ended up shortly after that, getting a truck mount, first truck mount and a van, which was actually gifted to me by uh, my grandfather. So that was a huge um, thing for me to be able to have a van and then go get a truck mount. Me and my brother actually drove from from Fresno, California to Albuquerque, New Mexico 
it's just straight through and uh, picked up a, a, a truck mount that I had found on Craigslist or someplace. I don't know. Some it's a, just a little Spitfire truck mount by Hydromaster. So I did that, and then after that, it's just every year, year after year, cooking, building the business, building the business. But it never really took off, and I've always been delving into how do I grow this business. And I'm five years in, six, seven years in, and I meet my wife, and I'm getting married, and all these things are happening. And I was able to secure, you know, where she didn't have to work when we got married, so uh, she could stay home and raise kids as they came. So that's what we did. And year after year, it's the same thing. And I built the business to where I could just basically on autopilot be about a hundred thousand a year and I did end up buying uh, my buddy's business that actually he got me into the business back at that bait and switch operation he ended up going on his own and buying a business and I ended up buying his business from him when he moved to Washington so now I have a uh, my business was incorporated in his business at that point I was golden all I had to do was sit back and collect the money and that's exactly what I did. I just sat back and collected the, the paychecks basically because I was running a multi-truck operation and I was bringing in, you know, two or three hundred thousand dollars a year. And I was like, man, that's the most I've ever made in my life. But I was making giant mistakes because I didn't know any better. I didn't know how to run a three hundred thousand dollar business. I didn't know what mistakes I was making until it was far too late and they were already made. So those mistakes caused me to um, really just owe a lot of money. So owe money to the IRS, owe money through the Franchise Tax Board of my state and just owe money for payroll taxes and all this stuff that I just didn't know how to do it back then. So it, you know, it ends up in big business killing mistakes if you're not careful. It ended up just getting to a point where it's okay, I'm done with it, I need to downsize and start learning about what I didn't know. So I'm 10 years into the business and I start learning at that point. I learned everything I could possibly need to know about running a business. So I start running my business right. But a lot of us have this, this fear in our head is that, okay, I did it once and failed. Maybe I'll just stay comfortable. So I was comfortable for a very long time. For another 10 years, I was just comfortable because I didn't have to Basically, I didn't even have to advertise. I didn't have to do anything, and the, the money would still come in. The, the people would still call year-round just from my core business customers. I didn't try to grow. I just kept where I was. I'm comfortable. I don't need to grow. So what changed? So why am I growing now? Why am I uh, to the point where, no, I want to grow. I want to put everything that I have learned in 25 years to work to skyrocket this business in as short a period of time as I can. I know how to run it now. I've made all the mistakes. I've learned from them and I've been learning constantly for 25 years and it's time to implement. As you know, I have a course teaching you what mistakes I made and how to how to not make them again and how to build your business right um, at the Carpet Cleaner Training website. But for today, what did I do or what was the, the change that made me say, okay, it's time to stop being complacent and just um, walking through life it's time to build my daughter came to me one day and she is 15 and she said hey dad I'm interested in possibly running the business someday she's watched me from birth on running this business so she says I might want to do it and my boys have always mentioned hey I want to work with you so I don't know if it's gonna happen I don't know if it won't but if I'm going to hand her the keys to a business, I want it to be a business that she can stand on my shoulders and be a, a head and shoulders further than I was at 20 years old, if she was to take it at 20, way further along. To have a business that she can sit back and manage rather than going on the truck and working. And she could have two or three or four or five trucks going into it at the start and maybe build it to 10 or 15 or 20, who knows? but I want her to be set up properly. So I knew the business was just kind of cruising, coasting along, so I knew I had to make a giant change. So this is what I did. So I just basically implemented everything I've learned in 25 years. I know how to build a business, I know how to make it grow, I know how to get customers. So that's what I did. I started with uh, my mind first. My mind had to change. It's okay, no more coasting, time to get to work. So my mindset shifted to, okay, now I'm no longer going to be 
this person that's just coasting along on cruise control, I'm gonna build something for her and for my kids. So the mindset shift was first, you have to get the mindset shift of I'm an owner now, I'm no longer a technician. So I made that shift in my head, okay, no longer a technician. And then I started in on the business. First step I did was get straight on who the business was and who it served. What were its values? What do we stand for? And I put together a set of core values. So the core values for my business is to be exceptional, be honest, and serve people. Those are my core values. Everything we do and everything we serve, all the people we serve and everything we stand for is built on those three values. And that goes, it permeates everything in the business from hiring to firing to marketing, everything is built on those core values. And that's imperative. I know you, a lot of people will gloss over, uh, core values doesn't really matter. It matters. It matters a great deal. Have your core values straight from the start and then build off of those core values. Build your whole business off of those values. And the next was the numbers. I had to know my numbers. And I'm going to put the numbers up here on the screen. We'll go into numbers a little bit. Um, for last year, uh, I'm sorry, but the year before that, so COVID year. This is the year after COVID. So COVID year. So we all know how COVID year went. It started off like uh, just a pile of crap because nobody was going to call. We're on, on lockdown, so we, we couldn't call. But I want to let you know that so we finished high. So typically, my typical year would, would fall somewhere in the hundreds, you know, low hundreds, between 100 and 120 was typical for a year just coasting. So I didn't have to do anything, no advertising, no nothing. It would just coast and I would make $110,000 a year. Um, COVID year, it actually ended really well. So you can see that it ended at um, 129, so just under 130. So I was actually up, you know, 20% from the previous year, just being COVID. And, and COVID killed the, the first three months of the year, you can see in the numbers here. So the first three months were crap. And then it started to grow and I ended up over. But this year was the year I decided, okay, it's time to um, ramp it up and we we're gonna ramp it up big. I wasn't going to go slow. I was going to do big time moves in the business. Uh, so I start with the numbers. So you can see from these numbers here, this is this year. And no, we're not quite done yet. We're still in December, but you can see where I'm finishing. We're, we're cracked 200,000 just now and we should finish strong through December and be very close to double what we were last year. So I'm looking to try to at least get somewhere close to 230 um, is the goal. So to, to do a 100% increase in the business. Now, how did I do it? So first of all, evaluating my numbers. Really, to build a business is strictly a numbers game. Don't get emotional. It's strictly a numbers game, okay? If you are going to do advertising, you need to know how much advertising you're going to do. And if you're gonna grow a business, we have to advertise, we have to market. So what do we need to do to understand the numbers? You need to know, okay, how many leads do I need to get to 230,000 where I wanna be? How, do, how many leads do I need to get to? So really the goal for this year was 200,000, but we're, we're over that, we've exceeded by quite a bit, quite a margin. Um, that 200,000 goal. So we're gonna go over that by a decent margin. So to hit that 200,000, I needed to figure out, and you would need to figure out how many leads you need. So whatever marketing you're doing, whether it's social media, Facebook, Google, all of those sources, and you should have multiple. You, you can't go off of just one marketing method. You have to have multiple. So I needed to know, okay, how many leads, how many phone calls, how many emails, how many, uh, form fills from your website do I need to have to get to $200,000 from wherever you're at. So make a, a big goal for yourself to get to a certain number and then implement everything you need to do to get there. So knowing my numbers, I need to know how many leads do I need, okay? Because you're gonna get a, a certain amount of leads and certain amount of those leads will go away and certain amount will land into an estimate. 
and then a certain amount of your estimates are going to land a job. So you need to know those percentages. So if 50% of your leads come in and they're gonna lead to an estimate, and then 75% of those lead to a job, and my job average is a certain amount, now you have a hard number that you can use. How many leads do I need to bring in to get to this number that I want? So it's fairly easy math after that. All you have to do is do those percentages and it's gonna spit out a number that you're gonna say, okay, I need a thousand leads in a year to hit this certain number. So once I knew that, then all I have to do is start implementing lead attraction. So we went heavy into Facebook at the beginning of the year and then went finished the year really heavy into Google Ads. And those are the two main platforms. And then we have um, Facebook posting as well. And we have, of course, the, the lead generation that when you're in the neighborhood, going to the customers that are directly around you. And we have lead generation by um, referral marketing as well. So we got referrals generation, we have lead marketing in the neighborhoods when we're there. We have Google running at full volume. We have Facebook running. So all these sources are bringing in the number of leads you need and then you go on the estimates or you estimate on the phone. I don't know what you guys are doing. And then you get to that certain point where, okay, keep that rolling. Once you, once you know how many you need and you test, okay, how much is, how many leads am I getting from this marketing and how many leads from that marketing? And you just strictly follow the numbers. So if you know you need a thousand and Facebook brings you in 30 a month and Google brings you in a hundred a month and you just calculate that out. Okay, I'm not quite there. I need to get more or I need, okay, I'm, I'm over what I need. Maybe I can ramp that down if we're going to hit the, or just keep going. If you're comfortable with a certain number, marketing is fantastic. And I don't want you guys to set uh, necessarily a marketing budget. I want you to say, okay, if my marketing creates a five to one return, so I spend 100 and I get 500 in return. If I told you I'd give you five bucks every time you gave me one, how, how fast would you stop giving me money. You never stop giving you money because you just take a dollar out and you put it right back in. Marketing works that way. So don't set yourself a marketing budget and say, okay, my budget is a thousand dollars. That's all I'm going to spend because it's ridiculous. If you spend the thousand and get 5,000 in return, there's no reason to set a budget limit on yourself unless you can't handle the work. And that leads us into hiring. So once you have your marketing starting to go, and technically you need to start your hiring funnel before uh, your marketing. So you need to start bringing in leads for hiring before you start the marketing, because if the marketing takes off and you don't have the ability to cover the amount of work that's coming in, then you've got another problem. And then you hire out of desperation rather than hiring from um, a place of comfort where, oh, I like these three people for a crew. Um, and you got rid of the, the other 500 that didn't fit the bill and you're not desperately hiring a warm body to get to fill the seat. Once that marketing goes, then you hire the people that can cover the work. And I know a lot of you guys are on the truck and I'm going to suggest that you can stay on the truck for a certain amount of time. But while you're on the truck, you may get to 250, 300,000, but at some point it's going to be very difficult for you to cover everything that needs to be done and work on the truck, at least working on the truck full time. Part time, yeah, fine, you can do that. But at some point, as you grow, it's gonna become very difficult and unruly to work full time on the truck and then come home and do everything that you need to do and get your social media done and all that. And that leads me into time management. I need to really hone in on my time management skills. What did I need to do to completely cover all this stuff? And I realized I couldn't. So I started hiring um, VAs, started hiring a VA to do bookkeeping, started hiring a VA to do the marketing. So I do have a very good VA that does my Google ads. I just can't do it on my own. So I, I had to del start to delegate that stuff to get done. And then as a finishing touch on this year, I focused heavily on um, customer retention. So if you're gonna grow, great, grow 200,000 a year. But if those customers don't come back, then you have to do it all over again next year. If you could retain those customers year after year, say your retention rate is 70 or 80%, it's fantastic because now you only need, if you keeping that truck busy at whatever it is, if that 
Um, truck is now busy and on, can be on cruise control because you have repeat customers coming back to that truck. Now you can implement the second truck much easier because now you don't have to advertise, okay, if I was advertising $1,000 on Google now, now I have to do 2000 to keep the second truck busy. Well, not necessarily. If you have that customer attention in place, you can maybe go at 1500 for your Google ads or your Facebook ads, whatever you're marketing at because you've retained 80% of your customers and they're coming back every year. So I don't have to fill that volume of customers all over again. Half of them are there. I just need now another half to fill the other truck with customers. That other one, I don't need 2,000. I need oh, 1,500 to keep that truck going. And then when that truck's fully full and you have enough customers that you don't have to advertise for that truck, it's full, you don't have any more, and then you start filling up that other one. Once that truck has enough customers, guess what? Third truck happens. So as long as you do everything correctly, then you, you have a business that grows and grows, and then you start getting the volume. But one major caveat to that is you have to make sure, 100%, this is non-negotiable, that your financials are completely solid. That was one of my major things that I screwed up on was my financials the first time around that I learned all this from and why I learned it because I screwed it up. I ended up owning a giant pile of cash that I had to just pay out. What you need to do is make sure that you are completely solid on your financials. Um, I'm happy to talk about in that video. If somebody wants it, just comment on it and I'll tell you how to do the financials properly in the right way. Um, other than that, that is it. I have grown this business from 100,000 a year just cruising and then through COVID up to 129. I wasn't trying to grow through COVID. It just happened because everybody wanted to clean after COVID happened. And then this year, we're finishing the year above 200,000. So we're looking towards or going to try to get to a 100% increase in revenue from year to year. And then we're going to attempt to do it again this coming year. Now, I don't know if I'll get there this coming year. It will involve um, purchasing a van and other things involved. So we'll see how the year goes and we'll just take it one day at a time. But we're cooking here and I would love to show you guys how to do the same thing. If there's something you're interested in, go to Carpet Cleaner Training and I'm happy to uh, consult with you about your personal company and talk about that. Um, and something else that we're doing is we do have a Facebook group that's now launched. So head over to the Facebook group and we're going to be talking about carpet cleaning business all the time. So um, put your comments in there, questions. Um, if you request a video topic, I'm happy to cover it. Just um, let me know in the comments or let me know on the uh, Facebook group and we'll get to it. Um, other than that, have an awesome day. Grow your businesses. You can grow it quickly as long as you have all your ducks in a row. If you don't, it's going to get out of control and you're going to end up hating the whole process. If you do it right, it can be a, a fantastic, fun business to be in. So the carpet cleaning business is a great business to be in. You're never going to be short of work if you know what you're doing. Give me some questions if you have something about this. I know this was a little longer video, but I think we covered a lot of great material. So make sure if you're in the middle of growing that you ask these questions, that you do it the right way. And I'm happy to walk through it with you. Just uh, like I said, go to the group and ask some questions, comments in the YouTube uh, comment section, subscribe, like, and that's basically it. That is how I grew this business. 100% through one year's time. So, and that's not from, you know, 50 to 100, it's from 100 to 200,000 in one year. You guys can do it too. I look forward to walking that path with you and I'll see you in the next video. And don't forget, there's a podcast that's joined with this so you can get the same information but just straight into your earphones. So, talk to you in the next episode. Have a great day.